Alrighty gang, Friday kicks off a severe weather outbreak. We already have a level four out of five red zone risk, it's pretty big, then around it in the orange, a level three out of five enhanced. Damaging thunderstorms will race across the Corn Belt and the Mississippi Valley beginning Friday afternoon and lasting through the overnight. We have multiple different rounds. The first one is this one over the Corn Belt, pushes into the upper Midwest. It has damaging straight line winds and embedded tornadoes. Then across Arkansas, Western Tennessee, Mississippi, even Northeast Louisiana, the environment Friday night is primed for tornadoes and perhaps some strong supercells with significant tornadoes. But the question is, does anything form at all? We're not really sure yet, so that's why it's a conditional risk. So in that area, you might not see much of anything, but you might see something really bad, so pay attention anyway. Still, this entire zone north to south has this yellow hatching. That means strong tornadoes, EF2 plus, are possible. Please do not take this lightly. And this is just the start of a three day long severe weather outbreak that on Saturday will affect the deep south with perhaps some really strong tornadoes there too. If you haven't already, follow me on all social media platforms and begin preparing your severe weather plan now. So diving in, I want to start off with the water vapor satellite over California and the Eastern Pacific. You see this big dip thing right here, this big swirl if you will, that's our upper level low. Now this pocket of cold air, low pressure and spin, that upper level low treks east across the Intermountain West and gets to us by the time we get towards Friday late morning into early afternoon. By then it has something we call a negative tilt. Basically it's shaped like an atmospheric backslash of sorts. And what that does is give the system extra kick. Think about if you're golf and you go to follow through, that follow through gives the ball more energy. Same thing here. So this thing has a really bad kicker. The parent low is also dragging a cold front east. Ahead of it, warm and humid. Behind it, cool and dry. That clash along the front brews our storms, so the front is the trigger. Now ahead of the front, like we said, it's warm and humid. That means instability or thunderstorm fuel, and there's a pretty good deal of it. Now we know we have the juice. The other ingredient here is wind energy. Our upper level low is basically kinking the jet stream, causing this dip or this trough. And this thing is so incredibly potent. There's a lot of jet stream energy set to work overhead and it passes over us right when the storms are getting going. So it impacts those storms. Any storms that grow tall enough will feel those really fierce winds, grab that momentum and mix it down to the surface in the form of damaging straight line gusts of 60 to 80 miles per hour. So these things will be loaded with wind. The other thing too, Changing winds with height could lead to some tornado potential across the Corn Belt. So conditions do favor some quick hitting tornadoes forming within that broader squall line. We call it QLCS. One other thing too, you know, sometimes we get hit or miss storms. These won't be that. We'll have very widespread storms. As the jet stream passes overhead, we have some spreading of the air aloft, some divergence upstairs. And the more air that spreads away aloft, we create like a vacuum upstairs and pull up air from below. And that rising motion causes more widespread storms. Now where we're a little bit less sure about storms, that's the lower Mississippi Valley. We know the bulk of the forcing, the oomph associated with our system, passes to the north of Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, possibly leaving that area to kind of miss out. So there's not much oomph there, not much trigger to get storms going. But if a storm can somehow get going there, changing winds with height would favor a rotating supercell with a potentially significant tornado threat. We do have plenty of instability, storm fuel there, so if a storm can get going on Friday night into very early in the wee hours Saturday morning, it will likely be severe and have big impacts. The question, does anything form? Most weather models have a really tough time sprouting a single storm. In any case, anybody in the risk area has to pay attention. This could be a higher end severe weather outbreak on Friday, and that's just the prelude of what's to come on Saturday, so please pay attention, stay with us, stay safe, and follow me for updates every step of the way. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa and Windows.